not as a prophet, but as a humble servant of you, the people. Never and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one. In the name of the heroic struggle of our people to establish justice and freedom for all it takes a strong person to fight for social justice, and it takes an even stronger person to make a change in society. Born on July 18, 1918, Nelson Mandela went to extreme measures to fight for equality in South Africa, risking both his life and his freedom. Nelson Mandela was born into the South African village of Mavezo. His father was the chief of the Dembu tribe of his village, so he looked up to his father as someone who showed leadership. He was the first in his family to receive a formal education when he studied law at the University of Witwatersrand. Here, he became involved in the movement against racial discrimination and he developed relationships with both black and white activists. In 1944, Mandela entered the world of politics and joined the African National Congress, also known as the ANC. After the 1948 National Party election introduced apartheid, Mandela's commitment to the ANC was strengthened. Apartheid is a formal system of racial segregation that restricts non-whites' basic rights and prevents them from government while maintaining white minority rule. Mandela helped lead the ANC's 1952 campaign for the defiance of unjust laws, and he traveled across the country to organize protests against prejudiced policies. He also promoted the policy known as the Freedom Charter, which was a statement of core principles of the South African Congress Alliance. In 1952, Mandela and his business partner, Oliver Tambo, opened South Africa's first black law firm which offer low-cost legal counsel to those affected by the apartheid legislation. He was about reconciliation, which means getting together. He didn't see white people as the problem. He saw a system controlled by white people as the problem. Right? And that's what he wanted to change. And that's what he was able to change. On December 5, 1956, Mandela and 155 other activists were arrested and had to go to trial for treason. They were acquitted in 1961, but tensions were created with the ANC, when riots broke out after the police opened fire on peaceful black protesters and killed 69 people, the apartheid government banned the ANC as well as the newly formed Pan-African Congress. Mandela and others were forced to go underground and wear disguises to escape being seen. Mandela began to realize that passive persuasion would not change the behavior of society. Mandela co-founded and became the leader of a new armed wing of the ANC, known as the MK. Under Mandela's leadership, MK launched a sabotage campaign against the government. In 1962, Mandela and several other activists had to stand trial for sabotage, treason, and violent conspiracy, and they were sentenced to life imprisonment. During the trial, he admitted and defended the charges against him, and rebuked the injustices of the apartheid. Mandela ended with the following words. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years total in prison. He spent the first 18 years at the brutal Robben Island prison, where he was confined to a small cell without a bed or plumbing, and he was forced to do hard labor. 
Being a black political leader, Mandela received smaller rations and worse treatment than the other inmates. Not only did the prisoners at Robben Island endure inhumane punishments, but Mandela was only allowed to see his wife, Winnie Mandela, and his two daughters once every six months. Despite the harsh, intense conditions of the prison, Mandela earned a bachelor's degree from the University of London while in confinement and continued to be an inspiration to those around him. He encouraged his fellow inmates to protest the harsh treatment through non-violence resistance. Mandela also risked his life and smuggled out political statements and a draft of his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom. Even while in confinement, Mandela still served as a leader of the anti-apartheid movement. In 1980, Oliver Tambo started a free Nelson Mandela campaign, which in result increased the public outcry against South Africa's apartheid government. The government offered Mandela his freedom in exchange for various political compromises, but he rejected these deals. In 1982, Mandela was moved to Polesmore Prison, and eight years later he was placed under house arrest in a security correctional facility. In 1990, the newly elected president, F.W. de Klerk, lifted the ban on the ANC and declared that South Africa be a non-racist country and ordered Mandela's release from imprisonment. This guy paid 27 years of his life in prison, you know, and those prisons that he was in, these were no holiday camps. You know, it was 18 of 18 of those 27 years was spent in this uh, shark-infested island, and, and uh, he got sick. He got some TB, tuberculosis, and uh, it, it was a it was a big sacrifice. After attaining his freedom, Mandela led the ANC in its negotiation with several South African political organizations to end apartheid and establish a multiracial government. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for these negotiations. On April 26, 1994, more than 22 million South Africans voted in the country's first multiracial election in history, and the overwhelming majority chose the ANC to lead the country. On May 10, 1994, Nelson Mandela became the first black president of South Africa. As president, Mandela established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and investigated human rights and attempted to improve the living standards in South Africa. He also enacted a new South African constitution in 1996, which established a strong central government based on majority rule. So what's his legacy? Um, big, if you're South African, uh, he has changed the lives of 87% of the population, now they can vote, uh, now they have the same political rights as the whites, so that's, that's big. As far as outside of South Africa is concerned, he has joined some of the other great men of history as somebody who has changed society and the way people think. Not only did Nelson Mandela stand up for what he believed in, but he also used his leadership skills to encourage others to stand up as well. He showed bravery and concern for the anti-apartheid movement, and despite his own hardship, he led the path to a society that granted equal rights to South Africans of all races. His life served as a symbol of determination and hope for the world, and after his death on December 5, 2013, he left behind a legacy of peace and equality. Risking his life to win equality for the people of South Africa was the cornerstone that caused a chain reaction of protesting against the unequal laws of South Africa at the time. His actions impacted the world in a substantial way, and he gave the world a future to believe in.